Wilson, who had a up-and-down game, to say the least, for the uh, Denver Broncos. Uh, I think that, you know, at times, it felt like, oh my god, the old Russell Wilson is back, and then it felt like he couldn't throw the football for a certain section of this game. Uh, I already have a video talking about the whole Hail, Hail Mary sequence and a two-point conversion on this channel. Check that out if you want to deep dive in that sequence, but what we're going to do with this video is to just talk about how he played in general and what are our takeaways moving forward. So first, let's start off with this play. You know, one of the things that I think people have criticized with Wilson is he doesn't look as mobile as we've seen him look in the past. That's been a pretty heavy criticism. He doesn't move like he used to. Well, let's see how he moves here, where it's going to be a design quarterback run. Run to play action and then have him roll out, you know, go out towards the top of the screen. Uh, hopefully, the edge rusher who I have circled in white, he's going to play a handoff, which means that when Wilson runs towards the top of the screen, you've basically gotten rid of an extra defender without having to use a blocker. And as you see, when Wilson does this, I mean, that edge rusher completely moved in, and Wilson is out towards the outside. This is the benefit of a play like this on a third down and two. Also, part of why you called us up, dialed us up on a third down and two is, you know, defenders are going to be, you know, making more of an effort to try and make a tackle right away. Could get someone to jump a little bit, you know, earlier towards the inside. As you see, Wilson, I mean, I don't know, looks pretty mobile here. Does a good job of being able to pick up a good chunk of yards. I would say very good stuff there from Russell Wilson. And these are the kind of things that we are used to seeing him do, right? When he's at his best, he what what is he at his best for? It's his mobility and his deep ball. And the deep ball was also definitely hitting early on in this game. First, in a way like this, where it's going to be a zone coverage concept, and the way it works is you have multiple receivers who are eventually going to get towards the offense's left down the field. You think about how should the Washington football team defend this play, you could have, you know, you could do it several different ways. You could have both safeties cover those two deeper routes, or you could have the safety who is lined up towards the bottom of the screen, he covers the uh, furthest deep route, and you have a linebacker drop back and he covers the, you know, the other route. Uh, it doesn't matter how you do it, you just have to make sure that you have, you know, you've communicated this beforehand and know what you're going to do if this situation happens. However, for Denver, when they run this play, Washington not exactly on the same page as no one really picks up that deep shot. And that's the one you want to make sure you pick up. You know, if you don't pick up the underneath one, not underneath, but over the middle one, that's still not ideal. But this one is definitely one you have to make sure you're covering. Wilson, you know, notices this. He makes the throw. But in the past, maybe last year, we saw him not hit these at the highest consistency. However, here, this is going to be a perfectly accurate football, and they're able to get the ball into the end zone for a touchdown. Okay, great stuff, right? Absolutely great stuff. Being able to get a touchdown there, really well done. But that was an easy throw, too, right? I mean, that was not the highest degree of difficulty type play. Well, okay, then what about one like this, where it's a third down and four, single safety deep, one-on-one -on -one matchup. So, okay, these are definitely the times when you want to take a shot. And as you see, Wilson's going to take the snap and this play, you know, he decides to make this throw and you look right here, there is definitely a window for Wilson to make this throw. But unlike that last play that wasn't that tough of a throw, didn't really have to fit it through a tight window, this one is, I would still say, is a tough throw. This is one that he's going to have to make sure that he kind of has a pinpoint accurate throw. It's Marvin Mims that's winning this matchup and watch what happens. As you see, this is right on the money, exactly where you would want it to be. Mims even had a chance to run for more yards after the catch because of how good of a throw it was. So when we're seeing this, you know, uh, Denver goes up 21-3. It's like, okay, Denver is about to pull away with this one, and the Broncos are all the way back. This is what we thought the Broncos were going to be last year. Uh, Sean Payton has fixed Russell Wilson. But then things started to change. I actually think this play was kind of really where things turned around for Russell Wilson. It's going to be a second down and 15 here. Wilson's going to take the snap. He runs a play action and is eventually going to, you know, doesn't love what he sees, so scrambles out. Okay, no issue here. You're a good runner of the football, right? But as you see, he's going to end up getting hit, and he actually loses the football. Washington recovers, and that really changed things, I think, in a big way. It was right at midfield, uh, you know, the Washington was able to have a short field and be able to score and start to, you know, get drives going. And their offense kind of woke up after this play. You can't blame all of the offense getting, 
you know, woken up on this one specific play. But it certainly, you know, if you're a believer in momentum, shifted momentum. If you're not a believer in momentum, it still, you know, was the beginning of Wilson starting to make, you know, miss a lot of throws, really. This one was one, it's a third down and nine situation, and it's, you know, not the highest degree of difficulty type play either, where watch what's going to happen here. Wilson takes the snap, he's going to look down the field, J he fires on the field, Jerry Judy is open in that direction, and if you make this throw accurately to where Judy can make the catch and continue running, this is an easy first down for him, it just is. But this throw was off, it was behind Judy, Judy made a good catch, you know, to adjust to it, but that prevented him from being able to pick up the first down. So, just because it's the completion doesn't always mean it's a good throw, and this is a classic example of Wilson missing a throw, and even though it was a completion, uh, you know, it cost them. And then some stuff like this, where what's going to happen on this play is it's, again, a first down and 10, and Washington's tied the game at this point. We're 10 minutes left in the third. Russell Wilson's going to take the snap, and I wonder if there was just some miscommunication issues happening, because, I mean, I don't know. You look at how far he's overthrowing this football. I wonder if he was expecting the receiver to kind of straighten out a route at a certain point instead of running towards the sideline, or he just let one get away from him. It's impossible to say, but this should be an interception. Wilson, you know, uh, got lucky this time and end up, ended up getting dropped, but that's obviously not something you want to see have happen, and this wasn't even the worst example of this on this drive, because later on this play, it's a third down and 10, you have the one-on-one -on -one matchup on the outside, okay, cool, that's where Wilson wants to throw it to, fine. But as you see, this is just, just going to be one of those straight-up miscommunications. There's no doubt about that. Receiver kept going. Wilson thought he was going to stop at the sticks, and it ends up getting intercepted. That's a, a, a tough break for Wilson and the receiver, but also just not quite on the same page there. So for all this, well, now the coaching is going to be way different. I don't know if you can blame this on coaching necessarily, but these are the, the little things that you expected to be better once a great coach got here, and they're still not better, uh, which is consistent concerning if you're a Broncos fan. And also this play, which in many ways ended up being the difference in the football game, because if they score a touchdown here instead of have to settle for a field goal, they wouldn't have been down eight points at the time of a Hail Mary that brought them within two. It would have been a different scenario. They would have been down, uh, I would assume, if they still don't convert to two-point conversion, they would have been down five, meaning the Hail Mary would have won the game instead of uh, just had them fall short of loot of tying it. The play concept itself, everything's going towards the outside. That's how this works. Nothing is going over the middle here. But when Wilson takes a snap, it almost looks like he's, you know, kind of looking towards the middle. He glances at both sides, and I don't think loves what he sees right away, which, like, I don't know, if you're going to make this play work, kind of have to get rid of this throw now. Kind of a weird play call from Sean Payton, who usually is incredible, and in this game, I would still say was really good. But this one was a bit odd, and it almost made me wonder if part of the, the, the design here was to get Russell Wilson outside the pocket. If, maybe that was part of the plan. Wilson tries to get outside the pocket and it didn't really work and in this game it didn't work a lot I thought that Washington's uh defensive line really looked awesome here and were able to kind of smother Wilson and that ended up being part of the difference and why the Broncos were not able to win this football game so yeah those are kind of my thoughts on this game it was as a whole uh, a disappointment if you're a Denver fan but I would still say you did see those positives and maybe that's something you can look towards and say okay yeah they beat themselves, but at least that's better than, like, it seems like they're incapable of putting up points in the first place, right? I mean, if you were to say at the beginning of the game, hey, you know, the final score in this one would be, you know, 35 to 33, you might feel pretty optimistic about at least Wilson can put up that kind of point total. At the same time, though, it's like you're paying him a lot of money. You're not paying him to be a volatile quarterback. You're paying him to be a great quarterback. He still has room to go to get there, but at least he's closer now, uh, I suppose. But yeah, those are my thoughts. What are yours? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.